I think what we're watching is him seeking to create an alternative political movement, a grouping of people um, who have a profound grievance, who believe that the election was stolen, um, who will continue to follow him and respond to him, um, a group that he can use for commercial, political, um, psychological purposes. He can continue to exploit them. He can continue to raise money off of them. And above all, he can continue to use them as a tool in American politics um, to continue to un undermine um, the Joe Biden presidency, to try and illustrate, to, 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 to make it a failed presidency, um, and, and to use that political power in support of people, people or causes. So while, while, what, while, these, while this range of frivolous lawsuits is not illegal, it is profoundly damaging. Um, it is profoundly damaging to the trust that Americans have in their political system and in their voting system, and that's not an accident. I think President Trump is completely within his rights to go to the courts and attempt to find out what happened uh, in Philadelphia, not far from the National Constitution Center, I suppose, um, and in other places in the country where uh, strong democratic machines may have uh, put their thumb on the scale. Um, if, uh, if the courts find that there's nothing uh, to worry about, if the courts decide that even if there is something to worry about, there's no remedy, then the lawsuits will go away. Uh, the norm will have been, uh, I would say, renewed rather than uh, destroyed or uh, decayed. Uh, and the president in that case will leave the White House and uh, President Biden will enter it. I don't see that there any anything untoward is likely to happen here. It is very clear that uh, a demagogue or for Italian populist can indeed damage American democratic institutions in a serious way. There's a lot of people in 2016 who said, oh, the constitutions will completely contain Trump. There won't be any serious damage to, to our governing system because of the genius of the founders. And so I love and revere the constitution and love the constitution center in part for that reason. Um, you know, I think that's a misunderstanding of what kind of tool the constitution is. It's a tool that has to be defended by people. Um, and when the people who are in high power don't have constitutional values, um, uh, when they think that any division of power or suppression of power is somehow a personal affront to them, and uh, whenever somebody wants to limit what they can do, they just need to be swept aside, um, the constitution won't guarantee the survival of American democracy. And so I think the last four years have uh, reminded us of how high the stakes are. What we have to have is both on the left and on the right, people have to defend classical liberalism and they critically have to defend it against their own people on their own side, so to speak. So if you're on the right and all you're doing is fighting left cancel culture, you're not doing your job. If you're on the right, and there's cancel culture on the right, you should be fighting that also. Because guess what? The left thrives on opposition from the right. The right thrives on opposition from the left. It has a greater difficulty dealing with that internal in-group opposition. And that's where it requires courageous people to stand up to people who are quote unquote on their own side or in their own tribe and, and to say, no, we have to protect a culture of free speech against threats from the right and against threats from the left.